Yes, hi everyone. My name is Samantha. I work at CSC in uh, Finland. I'm also a PhD student and I work also part-time for the Cold Refinery project. Hi everybody, so nice to see you. My name is Radovan. I work in Tromsø, Norway, or doing RSE work and with Cold Refinery project. And why are we two here? We will explain in a few moments, in a few minutes, it will make sense. And uh, so what, what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, so we're going to talk about, as said already, as about the experiences that we had uh, with our code refinery workshops and the uh, training that we are doing. And But first, maybe, what is the code refinery about? So code refinery is, well, one of my favorite things to talk about, so hopefully we can discuss more later, but it's a project. Uh, we exist since 2016. It's a Nordic project. Um, we are currently funded until 2025, but we hope to, we really have the ambition to be here for the long haul. Um, it's a training work network. It's also a community. But what, what is it that we do, that we actually do in our work? So we do a lot of teaching and we co-organize workshops um, with organizations from all over the Nordics. Uh, we also share our lessons, our video recordings of the lessons, uh, we also have a huge handbook of manuals on how we organize our sessions, how we do our lesson development and all this kind of stuff that you can find online on our website. And we do this all open source. And one, uh, so many people here at RSECon are involved with carpentries. One question that we get often is, so how do we relate to them? Because they do training in, in these kind of things. So what was the relation? So how we see it is that um, the researchers would first go to something like the carpentries training for the basics in programming and data science. And after that, after, you know, some programming, you would come to a code refinery workshop where you will learn about the things that other one will tell um, later about. And it's really things for reusable software and things that are not really taught in universities or also in like more specialty, specialist trainings like what we have in the HPC centers or stuff like that. So what is it we actually teach in our workshop? Yes, so, so this uh, this uh, graphics here is not from us. It's uh, from Heidi Seibold, but I like it so much that I put it in every presentation that I give because it so nicely summarizes really the things that we care about and teach in our workshops. It's about reprodu reproducibility and it really, we put a lot of focus on version control, but also how to organize projects, files, how to how to make things reusable, reproducible, how to stabilize the environment. So how to create little time capsules that we can still open in a few years and that will still work. But also finally, uh, how to publish code, software, data, how to make it citable, uh, software licensing how to document. So these are the topics that we do in our typically six half day uh, workshops. And I just wanted to show you here how our lessons look like. So in our workshops are not lectures, they are exercise driven like Carpentries workshops are it really inspired by this. Also, we, we don't present slides, a slide deck, but what we do is it's, it's really built about, around exercises. Our lessons are marked down underneath, but currently we use Sphinx to, to render these. But we are considering, um, uh, we are considering you know, maybe moving to the new Carpentries format to make this more compatible with what other communities uh, are used to. Um, here, maybe I can point out one thing wonder whether the mouse is visible. Yes, uh, one thing that really helps onboarding volunteers to help in workshops is that we have a list of exercises. They often don't have time to read and go through all the lessons, but the first thing that they will look at is what are the exercises to prepare. A few more things I can point out is that um, we put a lot of emphasis on instructor guides, um, where we <clears throat> where we also, for each workshop, write a little field report. How did it go? What did, what did, what went well? What, what didn't go well? Um, we are currently working on making the lesson citable. Uh, at the bottom of this slide, you can see that sometimes we have, uh, we use different tabs for different languages because we try to make our workshops, they are not bound to a certain programming language. This can also be used when you have, you want to show different examples from different domains 
like let's show an example for an ecology and one example for economy. So this can be a nice way for people to participate with different uh, background in programming language or academic domain to go through these examples. I just wonder whether I forget something important. I don't think so. So I mentioned that a workshop is typically six half days. Uh, it's online, but the teaching part is not everything. So there is more happening. So what's what's happening before the workshop, after the workshop, during the workshop, how does it work? Yeah, so there's actually a lot of stuff happening before and after the workshop. Before every workshop, uh, we have installation sessions because we encourage our, our learners to install the stuff that we're teaching on their own computers. Also, because we are a multi-organizational and also international collaboration, it's a bit hard to find a good platform for that. So everyone needs to install some stuff. We use Conda for that. Uh, we have very detailed instruction um, instructions on how to install the things on the different operating systems that the students might be using and with some uh, frequently asked questions. But then we also have a session where they can come if they have a, a certain problem. Like now with the new Max, there were some issues and they came and we could help them sort this out because we had seen that problem maybe before. Then we have uh, instructor onboarding. So it is for old instructors as well as for new instructors. Uh, to get to know each other, to get to know how the workshop works, to get to know about the format that we are using that I'm talking in a moment about, um, and to go through the lesson together and see if there's anything unclear or anything that needs to be worked worked on. And then we have also a lot of helper and uh, helpers, and uh, we also have an onboarding session for that, and those become became now more and more important that we have those sessions. Also for the helpers to know how does the workshop work, what is expected of them, what is not expected of them, um, how we are also there as the code refinery team in the background to help also the helpers to help the students um, uh, and the different, different levels of helping that are available. And then after the workshops, we have um, a debriefing session for everyone involved in the workshop. So we talk about what went well, what didn't go so well, what, what do we need to remember for next time. We also have a community chat where everyone who joined the workshop as a learner can come and ask any open questions or come with their projects and ask, hey, what, how can I now apply this to this? Um, we also had once a hackathon. I think once only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which was really nice and uh, really well received also, but it was also a lot of work for us. So it would be great to do that more in the future, but let's see how that goes. Uh, and then we have the videos available after the workshop forever. They are on YouTube. You can watch them from every workshop that we had. It's always different instructors instructing the different lessons. So you can find the one that suits you best, for example. Uh, the workshop itself um, is live streamed. So we don't have this everyone in a Zoom room and uh, the instructors also being there and then maybe some learner appearing um, on the recording or something. We have one um, Zoom room for the instructors that is live streamed to everyone. Everyone watches that stream. And it's always uh, two, at minimum two instructors or mostly it's actually two instructors um, for every lesson. Uh, so like we are doing now, and that's why we actually are doing this now together. Uh, to show you a little bit how this can go. So it can be a little bit in of interaction between the instructors and it's not just one person presenting as it um, so often is. Uh, and that also means that important things um, are less likely to be forgotten. It's a bit easier to get on board. So we always have two people teaching every lesson. Uh, like Radovan said already, it's less lectures. Uh, more hands-on, which are done in teams. We'll get to that as well. And then the uh, interaction that we have with the stream. So, um, so yeah, because we are streaming our workshop, so there is no direct interaction with the instructors. But the learners can interact with the instructors on stream via collaborative document. We have been using HackMD, now we're using Hedgedog for that. Uh, so we have really paralyzed question and answers. We have um, instructions that are written down in this collaborative document. We get feedback via this collaborative document. Should we have a look at how and, this thing looks? Or... Yeah, let's have a look uh, how this looks. So this is now a screenshot uh, in the beginning of an exercise. So we write down what is the exercise about that we are doing at the moment. Uh, the link to the exercise where students can find the instructions until when the exercise is going. It's uh, at minimum 10 minutes, better 15, better even longer. 
so that students have time to uh, get to do the exercise, but also discuss with their peers. Um, then the, the goal, there's usually a minimum goal. And then uh, if you have time, you can do also this and this. Uh, and then there's space for questions. Um, and then there's uh, questions coming in from students, from helpers, from instructors maybe, um, that are written down. They are anonymous and they can happen in parallel to someone speaking on stream or to the exercise happening uh, at the same time. And um, then also the answers can come um, in parallel and asynchronously. So if you have put a question, you can maybe leave it there for a moment if it's not important and then come back later and see if someone answered. And then it's so very often the case that we have the code refinery team maybe being the first, someone being the first to answer there. And then there can be the situation that there's maybe multiple opinions on a thing. So then we have uh, multiple answers, maybe from the code refinery team, maybe from some other people in the course. And sometimes there's really great discussions coming from these um, questions that people put there. And uh, after every workshop day, we also go through the questions, make sure they are answered sufficiently and um, that they that they have an answer. And we really get like during the course, every one to two minutes, new questions there. And it's, it's a lot that comes in there. And I'm not sure we even mentioned the size of the workshop. So, so these days we have easily 200, 300 people participating. So we have two people who do nothing else than First, they do training for, for uh, keyboard typing, but they answer questions. Uh, but this is really community answer, parallelized uh, Q&A. Yes, and then I also mentioned that we, since we do not have this direct feedback like we have here now, we can look into your faces, see if you're desperate with the exercises or if you're happy and done. Uh, we need to uh, ask them in another way. And the way we found that works quite well is this uh, graph feedback. So we ask, uh, how's the speed so far or how's the exercise going and then uh, um, students add their own where they feel like it fits best. Of course, if uh, it's going too fast for students, there might not be the time to put their own there, but we still get like some some view of how it's going during exercises or also during the lectures. And then yeah, we publish these uh, question and answers. You can find them on the past workshop pages and um, they, are, they are all answered there. Um, so I mentioned already, uh, we have this live stream and the collaborative document, that's the same for everyone. So no matter how you are joining the workshop, um, this will be always the same. But then when it comes to doing the exercises, there's some differences on how these are done and what are the options there. And I'm assuming that we have something like seven minutes left if I, but let me know if this, this is different. So everybody watches a stream, but everybody can choose their own path. How do they want to participate in the exercises? Some people prefer doing exercises on their own or later some other day. Uh, one thing that we really like is this bring your own team or bring your own classroom. So we have teams that go through exercises together. They know each other from research groups. Uh, some of them follow online. We even have uh, classrooms who watch this workshop. So they, they reserve a classroom together, they watch the stream, and then they do exercises together in, in the room. Some people don't have colleagues to do to go through this workshop, but they still like to collaborate with others. And for those, we, we provide a, a Zoom room with helpers so that they can collaborate with people who, do, who they don't know yet. And this is, so we have in, we exist in seven years, we have done lots of these workshops, but the it's only on the last two, three, four years that we really focus on online workshops and we are still learning. So this is still improving. This is work in progress. We are growing. We managed to reach over 500 persons per year. We focus these days less on measuring registration, but more on looking at how do people view uh, these workshops. Many people are involved. There are some people who are here in this room who, are, who have been involved or are involved as a helper, exercise leader, instructor. So this is a big operation. This really takes the size of a almost of a, of a conference. And uh, so all these, so the logos there in the middle, these are, they represent different organizations in the Nordics. It's, a, it's mostly an in-kind project, but we try to really go beyond the Nordics. And especially through these, like bring your own classroom uh, system. So we collaborate with TU Delft, Netherlands ESI Center, the, the VU Amsterdam. We have classrooms from Spain, from Germany. And for us as organizers, it can feel 
like working in ad traffic control. So we have these. So this is this picture on the right is from our, our colleague Richard, who has I don't know seven eight monitors there going. So we feel like sitting in the tower, you know, with binoculars and we're watching that everybody everything is going safely. And so please join us, come to our airspace, bring your passengers. We have an open seat always for co-teaching. You know, the co-pilot seat is open. So please join us there. Five minutes left. What have we learned? These are the important slides. So, um, well, the, one of the main things is that teaching for us isn't a lecture anymore. It's really more like a t TV production, like you've seen in the picture, that we have this one guy who has really uh, have to have the overview of er everything that's going on. But it can be as interactive as having people in the same room due to the collab or via the collaborative document. The co-teaching is really great to get new people like me, for example, on board uh, teaching or also presenting with more experienced people together to reduce the stress of the situation, to get better quality because it's less likely that some things get forgotten. Um, what we try to also teach in our workshop is that good enough practices are better uh, are better than uh, perfect practices not applied. So, for example, in our documentation lesson, we teach about using Sphinx and uh, putting it on read the docs to have it nicely somewhere. But we also uh, talk about the readme uh, file and when it is maybe even enough for a project. And then instead of good for others, which might be sometimes very hard for researchers to uh, be very convincing because, oh, my code is so bad and, oh, I will never share this is never good enough for anyone to use. We also emphasize that it's good for also future you and not only for others, but as a side effect, of course, then also good for others, what you're doing with your code. And then about scaling. So we have been scaling quite a lot in the last few years and uh, the installation instructions uh, so that everyone is ready to go when they come to the workshop are very important and then also the onboarding so that people know what to expect the instructors the helpers also the students that everyone uh, knows what's coming up uh, we don't see the classroom so we really need this feedback uh, situation via the collaborative document and uh, now that we have a lot of these bring your own classroom type of situations, we also need to make sure that we give enough time for exercises. So like I said, it's uh, at least uh, 10 minutes, better 15 and better even longer so that everyone has time to do the exercises and also discuss. And I think since we have two minutes left, I will say that we think about the future, but it's really about improving the the two, the communication. So the uh, connecting to the keynote uh, talk from this morning, we, this, there is a lot of room for improvement. But maybe since we have really only time for one or two slides, if you find this interesting, if you would like to participate, uh, if you would, so how how can how can you participate in this in an easy way? So uh, well, the next op opportunity is in two weeks, so you can join our next workshop. You can find uh, the. Um, the uh, registration on our website. Uh, if you yourself are not interested in joining this workshop, you can send your students, you can uh, send your researchers, uh, you can send the whole team if you have a, a team of students already that you know that could benefit from this workshop, even just from parts of it. You can also just join, for example, the first week and learn about Git if you're not interested about, about the rest. Or if you're interested in how we do the workshop, how it really works with this live stream and uh, collaborative document, you can also join us a uh, observer and then of course use our material and give us feedback and in general we try to make it easy to join also the community which is a really great community i've been enjoying it a lot to chat with people with the same or similar interests so you can chat with us on our zulip chat and um, now we also started summarizing all our team meetings on mastodon so if you want to stay up to date what's going on then you can follow us there and a short advertisement in the very end. So many of the code refinery team are also part of the Nordic RSE. And there will be an unconference uh, in uh, end of October with the theme of hidden gems and paper cuts. So if you have anything that fits that topic, then please come and uh, have a chat with us and uh, enjoy the unconference. Thanks so much for your time and attention. All right. OK, so we have we'll, we'll give you the five minutes, even though we're running behind. We'll just finish a bit late because we have lunch on the other end. So sorry, lunch will be a bit delayed for people in this room. 
Um, okay, so the, the first question here, uh, the teaching style is really great, but is it harder to prepare for lessons doing this dialectic style? I would say it's actually easier because you are not alone. You are you are always together with your uh, co-teacher and can discuss like, how do we want to present this? What do we want to skip also? Because we have always way more material than we can actually put in the lecture. Great, thanks. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, we've answered that question. I'll move on to the next one. Um, do you welcome contributions and teachers from other institutions? I suspect I know the answer to that, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely we do. Um, and and maybe the best way to join is uh, in the next workshop, maybe pop in as an observer, have a look. Does it look interesting how they do it? Send a team. So we have a nice, It's there is a, like a good progression. Uh, send a team, get involved, absolutely we welcome. And through this co-teaching model, you don't need to have the big picture. It's, we believe it's uh, relatively easy to join. Great. Um, uh, right, so next question, uh, saying, oh, okay, that one, that top one disappeared. Was that? Okay, okay, yeah, great. Uh, so yes, how do you gather feedback after courses? Very good question, how, and how frequently? Should I answer? So after each day we collect it uh, via our collaborative document. So in the bottom of each page, we have like one thing that was uh, good, one thing that could have been better and any open feedback. Sometimes we have some more specific questions. Um, and then we also uh, try to do a survey a few months later because to, to ask, well, what did really stick, what did really change? But it's really the day-to-day -day feedback that we also publish. So you can, for any of our workshop, you can check the feedback for any session. And it's it's the thing I look at when preparing the next workshop, because then I want to see what did people like, what was not good, what did they ask about. So it's it's a valuable output of the workshop that we also publish. Great. Um, okay, moving along. Uh, do you welcome contributions and teachers from other... Okay, we I think we already answered that one. Sorry, I, I jumped ahead to that. So if we could just get rid of that one, that would be great. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, right, next question. Are your helpers, helpers all volunteers uh, and where do you recruit them from? Yes, they're all uh, volunteering to spend their time with us. It's very often that uh, people come to the Code Refinery workshop and like it so much that they want to contribute something. And the easiest way to do that is to become a helper afterwards. That's what happened to me. For example, I started from learner to helper to instructor to organizer. But I can add there oh, that yes, most are volunteers, but it doesn't mean that we want them to work in the evenings and on the weekends next to their job. So the ideal model is that they convince their their work to donate them to let them work on this for part of the time half a day a week one day a week during the course of the workshop so the ideal model is an in-kind model so that it doesn't add to the to the day-to-day -day work thanks okay we'll, we'll continue on um how do you distribute training events across a year what, what defines your cadence basically so we have usually uh, two workshops a year, one in spring and one in autumn, uh, and then smaller partner events like throughout the year, depending on when the organizations that uh, mainly organize them uh, need them. Yeah, and we, we normally look at all the vacation calendars and school vacation calendars in the Nordics, in Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Norway. And then there are two weeks that nobody has vacation. And these are the two weeks in September and two weeks in March. So that's how it came to be. And it is a lot of organizing work. So these days we really try two events per year because we currently would not be able to do more than that. But there is definitely a demand for more, a need for more, but later. 